The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. For he hath founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord or who shall stand in his holy place? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart, who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. He shall receive the what? Blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is the generation of them that seek him, that seek thy face, O Jacob. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lift up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, even lift them up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. So far, the scripture, thank you for joining me. Tonight, I'd like to share with you, the King is coming. Tell your neighbor, the King is coming. And I took that title from the context of this 24th Psalm, and I love the Psalm. I think you've, if you've listened to any of my tapes, you know I love to preach from the book of Psalm because it is such a rich portion of the scripture. It is a part, part of the scripture that takes you into Israel's worship life. And I believe strongly in worship. It doesn't only take you into Israel's worship life, but it teaches you how to have a life of devotion, a life of meditation. A life where you come to God and have an intimate, ongoing relationship with Him. I believe that God gives us gifts to preach, to teach, to minister, to sing. But after you do all of that, it's your personal day-to-day -day walk with the Lord that makes the difference. I can be a great preacher and a lousy person if I don't have that day-to-day intimate relationship with the Lord. When the service is over and the conference is over and you go home, you must have more than just a church experience. You must have a day-to-day -day, intimate ongoing relationship with the Lord. Well, the Psalm takes you there. The book of Psalm is considered a book of poetry. It is among the books of poetry such as Job, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, and Proverbs. The psalm, however, takes you into not only poetry, but prophecy. The psalm prophesied, Jesus would say on the cross, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? The psalm also prays, because we have psalm of supplication. Even though these psalms, they sang them, because the word psalm in the Hebrew is to heal them. T-E-H-I-L-L-I-M, which translates song of praise or hymn of praise. So when, they, when you look at the Psalms, you see the hymn book of the Old and New Testament. But they also are prayers, song of prayers, song of supplication. Well, unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. O my God, I trust in thee. Let me not be ashamed. Let not mine enemy triumph over me. That's a supplicatory psalm. Then you have psalm that lends to praise and worship and adoration where you lift up the name of the Lord. You lift up the greatness of God and you magnify his name. Great is the Lord and what? Greatly to be praised in the city of our God, in the mountain of his holiness. Beautiful for situation is the joy of the old earth. Is Mount Zion on the side of the north, the city of the great king. Then you have psalm that reflects a personal, intimate gratitude. Thy loving kindness is better than life. My lips shall praise you. Thus will I bless you. I will lift up my hands unto thy name. As the heart panteth 
after the water brook so that my soul panted long it after thee O Lord there's nothing that can lift you real quick if you need a quick lift you go to the Psalms now I know many of you are very deep into eschatology and you live in Revelation and Daniel but for those of us who are just trying to get through day to day trying to make it trying to overcome depression trying to fight evil the Lord is my light and my salvation whom shall I fear the Lord is the what strength of my life of whom shall I be afraid when the wicked when the wicked when the wicked when the wicked come upon me to eat up my flesh they stumble and fell though one host should encamp against me bring on your big guns devil in this will I be confident oh I feel a praise right here I feel like praising him for the Psalms the Lord is good so if you need to know how to reach the heart of God or talk to him from your heart you can go to the book of Psalms they're not just poems they lead you into devotion and meditation I believe deeply in meditation meditation is not just cornered by the new age market they're not the only ones who know how to meditate and those who do TM transcendental meditation you ain't the only one who know how to get to the heart of God I don't know what God you serve and those of you who mix a little yoga with a little exercise I don't need yoga I just have to think on him just think on him just think on him I don't have to deep breathe I just think on him think on him Lord for he is my life he is my joy and he is the center of my life so when I think on him I know I'm blessed blessed is the man blessed is the man blessed is the man and for those of you who are in seminary blessed is the person because I know we're not supposed to say man you understand can't say man anymore can't say person for those of you women who get offended blessed is the person blessed is the person who walketh not in what? The counsel of the ungodly. Nor what? Standeth in the way of sinners. Or sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his slash her delight is in the law of the Lord. And in this law does, does he slash she meditate day and night. And you shall be like a tree, Lord have mercy, planted by the rivers of waters whose season, who bringeth forth his fruit in his season, whose leaves also shall not wither, and whatsoever you do shall prosper. Come on and put your hands together. I feel a praise in the house. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. Well, we're in the 24th Psalm, and the 24th Psalm is one of the most majestic Psalms among the processional Psalms. A processional because whenever Israel came up whether it's to the Ark of the Covenant or to the tabernacle or to the temple there was always a processional I know in many many churches today they don't have processionals they don't even have altars you know they're not gonna have processionals but they don't process they don't come up a certain way it is not formal you know you just run in and grab a seat you know, like you go into the stadium, there's no real glorious entrance. There's no magnificence in our worship. Uh, but the processional suggests that you're entering in and giving glory and honor and recognition to someone in a superior position. That's why he says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the what? Sheep of his pastor. And here it is now. Enter into his gates with what? Thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name for the Lord is good his mercy is everlasting and his truth endure to all generation now I know many people do not like this exuberant loud ecstatic uh, you know emphatic praise but then you'll have to tear all of that stuff out of the Bible I know you like to think and contemplate and intellectualize but coming into public worship requires a certain kind of expression enter his gates with Thanksgiving that means you got to open your mouth your wonder intelligent contemplative mouth and say thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you and into his course with praise hallelujah 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 glory 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 
bless you, bless you, bless you, bless you. Praise you, praise you, praise you, praise you. You're wonderful, you're wonderful, you're wonderful. You're great, you're great, you're great. You're awesome, you're awesome, you're awesome. Ah, you're the bright and morning star. Lord, I wish I had a church to help me right here. Come on and let me hear your praise. Everybody else, so. Hallelujah. Public worship. I have a, I believe in meditation. I believe in 90% meditation at home and 10% of my time is in public worship. So by the time I get here, I'm loaded. I'm loaded. Jesus, am I loaded? Because I spent time with him in the bathroom and I, I backed up with him in the kitchen and I sat beside him at my bed. So by the time I get here, I'm so full. I can't help myself. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. And the humble, the humble, the humble shall hear they'd often be glad come on help me here come magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together come on and let me hear you praise him with a loud noise hallelujah oh. hallelujah that's what he loves he loves the praises he loves the worship he inhabits the praises of Israel and so we see in this psalm they're processing and it's probably it was sung at the Feast of Tabernacles which is still today celebrated in October or at the dedication of the temple or at their New Year celebration and if you've ever been to Israel you will see at the Wailing Wall they go berserk especially the men I know sanctified men look cute but Hebrew men jump around see Hebrew men. I know most men are very, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That is a little cute thing going on. But Hebrew men get down. They do somersaults. They stand on their head. So it's not cultural. It's cross-cultural. Lord have mercy. It has nothing to do with the color of your skin or where you were born. It's just what God demands. He is to be adored from the rising of the sun. Lord, until the going down of the same, the name of the Lord should be exalted. Come on, I want London to hear his name exalted. Come on and raise your voices. Glory and honor, praise and adoration. Hallelujah to Jesus. Glory to the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And we are not ashamed to praise you. And we came to praise you. We rose to praise you. We live to praise you. We love to praise you. Come on and tell him hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. So I want you to see this psalm as a processional psalm. What is it? A what? Processional psalm. They're coming in. But I choose to think, and some scholars will agree, uh, and you may disagree, but some scholars agree that this was the psalm that they sang when David brought the Ark of the Covenant into the, the, the presence of the nation of Israel when he was just made king over all Israel. And that's why he danced out of his outer tunic because he finally brought the presence of God into his administration finally brought the presence of God so that his kingdom could be secure because without him we can do nothing but it was not always like that with David because David had a little breakdown you know all of us get a little breakdown every now and then even the greatest of people they get breakdown because David was a man after God's own heart he was a, a, a sweet musician he was a, a worshiper but he had a little breakdown why because there's a little history behind this David now wanted the ark in the presence of Israel but he failed earlier the ark was in Shiloh and the Philistines confiscated the ark. What is the ark? They're looking for it today, and they say it might be in an area in Ethiopia. They're still looking for the ark. The ark of the covenant is an oblong box made out of shittim wood overlaid with gold. 
Inside of the box, you have some articles. You first have a, 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 a tablets of law to show that God has standards. Thou shalt and thou shalt not. You have also have a sample of a pottage of manna to show that God took care of the children of Israel for 40 years in the wilderness and nobody went to bed one night hungry. Also had Aaron's rod that budded to show that God took a man like Aaron who failed, publicly failed, a man who was weak, a man who could not make up his own mind and strengthened him and gave him character and made him head of the priesthood. Aren't you glad that Aaron's rod is in there? And then he closed the, 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 the Ark of the Covenant and right on the lid you have the mercy seat. It's a raised area sprinkled with blood and then you have cherubims touching their wings right over this raised area and right there you have a circle cloud called the Shekinah or the glory cloud. It is that Ark of the Covenant that is born on the shoulders of the priests that when it comes into the presence of Israel they feel secure. They know they're going to be prospered. They know they're going to be protected. The cloud is not God. It is an intimation, an indication that God is eminent. He's near. He's close. Even though he's high in the heavens, but he's also close to them in the camp. So when Israel went up before the ark, they shouted. The Bible said they shouted until the earth trembled. And when the enemy heard it, they knew God is in the midst. So every time you come together, you ought to praise God so that the whole area ought to know God is in the midst. This is how we respond to the presence of God. When men go in the army, they salute their superiors. When church folk get together, they praise their king. Come on and let me hear you. Give glory and honor to your king. Glory, 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 glory. And the only person, the only person who doesn't like to praise God with that kind of expression are persons who are competing for the Godhead. For we know we live in an age of new age where you're told that you're just as good as God, that you got a God in you, that there's a little God in you trying to be a big God. So even the philosophy of the world and even our subtle theology pulls us out of the realm of inferior and tries to put us on the same line of God. But anybody that got any sense know that he's high and he's lifted up and his train filled the temple. Ah, and we cry, holy, 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 holy. Lord God Almighty, the whole earth is full of his glory. And there is no other God like our God. And unto the King eternal, immortal, invisible, he's the only wise God. Be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Come on, let me hear you say amen. Let me hear you say amen. Hallelujah. The Bible said that that this ark was taken out of the camp of the Philistines because you see the enemy knows that when the presence of God, the sensing of his presence, the nearness of his presence, when it's absent, that you feel a little insecure. It is proper to feel insecure when you don't sense God or you can't get a word from God and when you don't know that God is near you may know it intellectually but you can't feel him the word of God is not sharp in your mind you're seeking an answer and you can't get it you ought to feel insecure because he is the way he is the truth he is the life he is the one who shows and directs he is the one who has the word for your life so when he's absent or his presence seems to be absent it can cause you to be shaky and the enemy knows when you don't praise God you are not going to be confident he knows when you don't give God the glory that you won't feel so centered and focused praise is not only due to God but it's therapeutic the more I praise him the more I sense who I am in him the more I praise him is the more I receive benefits from him the more I lift him up is the more he lifts me up before I'm before the more I magnify him is the more he magnifies who I am in him so praise not only goes to him but praise turns around and ricochets and lifts me up so for those of you who don't praise him no wonder you got to fight your own way no wonder you got to figure out your own way but when I praise him he says go there and not there he said do this and not do that he says you're healed and you're not sick somebody ought to stop right now and lift him up high come on and exalt him I praise you I praise you in front of all these people, I praise you. 
I don't care who is watching, I praise you. And I love to praise you. Come on and magnify him, church. Let the earth tremble. Let the earth tremble. Let the earth tremble with praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The Bible said that the Philistines, the enemy, the enemy stole the presence of God out of Shiloh and discomforted the people. And the Bible said they took the presence of the Lord and thought they could handle it. Now there are two people who are in the presence of the Lord. People who love God and people who do not love God. And if you love him, you embrace God. If you don't love him, you can't handle him. His presence will either bless you or curse you. There's no middle line. His presence will either lift you or tear you down. His presence will either build you up or tear you apart. So if you love God, you're in the right place, the right place. If you love God, his presence will bring benefits. But if you don't love him, it'll make you uncomfortable. Lord, when you start praising God, people who don't love him, they start getting angry. See, they start picking their nose and picking their ears and looking all around like they're crazy and going to the bathroom and feeling funny like they're in the wrong place. You're right, baby, you're in the wrong place. Because we come into his house, gathered in his name to worship him. Let's forget about ourselves. Concentrate on him. Oh, I feel a praise in here now. <laughs> Come on and and let me hear you. Hallelujah. I said we came to praise him. We didn't come to bow down to Allah. We didn't come to give glory to Buddha. All hail King Jesus. Come on and let me hear you say glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The presence of God carried in this box intimated his presence. The Philistines took it into their camp and it caused them much agony. They placed it next to their God in the temple of Dagon. Dagon made part man and part fish out of stone. And they went through this series of attacks where they woke up and found Dagon, hands cut off head cut off, bowing down before God. He doesn't share his glory with another. Lord have mercy. He doesn't share his glory with a witch doctor. Lord have mercy. Did you hear what I said? He doesn't share his glory uh, with a seance worker. No, 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 no. He doesn't share his glory with a psychic reader. No, no. It's God and God alone. Oh, I feel a praise in the house. <laughs> hey. Oh, come on. I want the devil to run out of here tonight. He has no place in here tonight. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. See the ark. See the presence. See the presence in the Philistines, discomforting them, wearying them, breaking them down. And the Bible said, if attacking their God was not enough, the Bible said that he sent hemorrhoids. All right, you know hemorrhoids. Yeah. You know hemorrhoids. And you know where hemorrhoids hang out. They hang out in a certain place. And there was no preparation age. In New York, we use preparation age. I don't know what you all lose in London, but it's an ointment that's supposed to help you, help you. So you could eat and sit down and be comfortable. Ah, but God sent hemorrhoids in the secret places. That's what the Bible said. He doesn't need a bow and arrow. He can do, do stuff that you'll know only God could have done this. You mean to tell me everybody in the camp woke up one morning with hemorrhoids? You know that ain't nobody but God. Oh, come on here. And suddenly it dawned on them. We better take our hands off the presence of God. And I'm warning somebody in here. Take your hands off the presence of God. Don't tamper with it. Don't mess with it. God will not share his glory with another. He'll strike you 
where you thought you would never be stricken for God is a great God oh come on here you better back up and let him have his way you better bow down and say yes to his will you better raise your hand and honor who he is ah uh, because if you don't honor him he'll show you who he is come on and let me hear you praise him church he deserves praise in this house hallelujah the Bible said that it dawned on the Philistines we can't handle him we better get him back to the camp where he belongs so they put it on the back of an animal and sent it went into Abinadad's house the Bible said that David now wanted the ark back and he sent for the ark and the ark was placed on an animal not the way God said it God never said put my presence on the back of brute beasts the presence of God must be born on the shoulders of consecrated men. The presence of God must be born on the shoulders of sanctified holy men, not on the back of animals. And the Bible said that the animal shook the ark when he got to the threshing floor and Uzzah reached out and touched the ark perhaps in the place of the, uh, 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 of, the of the mercy seat and God struck him and David couldn't understand what is going on why was God so angry and the Bible said he rejected the presence of God there's nothing wrong with being angry and confused about God's decision because we all cannot understand how God works at times and why he's so harsh in this area and so soft in this area and why he gives justice here and judgment over there but if we can peg him then he is not God if we can control his actions then we would be God he said as far as the heavens are above the earth so are my thoughts from your thoughts and that's what the problem with us we want God to be our little lackey you do what I tell you to do and go where I tell you to go but God sits on the circle of the earth he rules in the affairs of men he does what he wants in the armies of men and who can say what doeth thou his hands are not short that he cannot save oh come on here that's why we will never understand some things until we get to glory that's why we just bow to him and say I'm mad I'm mad I'm mad I'm confused but you're still God ah don't you ever reject his presence even if you're mad still call him God even if you're confused still say hallelujah even if it hurts still say thank you Jesus oh come on don't you ever reject him always say I'm mad but you're God I don't understand it but you're God I don't know why I can't have my way but you're still God come on and give him glory in the house glory to God I must confess that I am not a model person all the time I must confess I don't always wake up happy 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 I must confess that not all my prayers are sweet. Sometimes my prayers are laced with a whole lot of temper tantrums. I'm not going to do it. I know you told me, but I'm not going to do it. I know you said it, but I can't understand it. And how come I can't do it? And how come I can't say what I want to say? But after a while, I shut my mouth and begin to say, but I thank you. I just thank you for waking me up because you could have cut me off. I just thank you for keeping me alive because I could have been dead. I thought I get through having a little fit. How many of you know what it is to have a little fit? Have a little fit. I know some of you are so wonderful you never have a fit. But every now and then I have a fit. But when I get through my fit, I hear a glory, 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 glory. <laughs> when I get through having a tantrum, I go, yeah, 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 yeah. Even though I said no earlier, forget it, strike it. And my soul says yes. Oh, come on. Thank him for who he is. Even if it's tough right now. Even if it's difficult right now, praise him for who he is. He is still God in the good times, in the bad times, when you can't understand, when you don't know what's happening. He is still God. Come on and raise your hand and praise him. Hallelujah. We have, I don't want to stand here and paint you a picture of this great model preacher that always says to God, yes, yes, yes. Sometimes I say no and then come back and say yes. <laughs> Sometimes I fuss and then apologize. 
Sometimes I fold my arms and won't say hallelujah. And next thing you know, I'm running around the church. Ah, because I realize that he's a good God. And that he is a merciful God. And he doeth all things well. And even though I release my feelings, I come right back. I come right back. Nevertheless, 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 in spite of, I still know you're my daddy. Ah, you're my best friend. You're the keeper of my soul. Come on, somebody wanted to quit him. Come Come back and praise him right now. Come on and raise your hand and give him glory. Hallelujah. Here is David completely out of it. Can't control God, so he's going to reject him. And the Bible said he rejected the Ark of the Covenant. But there was a man named Obed Edom. He was not a priest, he was not a great man, he was just a man that loved God's presence. The Bible said, David, you don't want it like Donnie said tonight. I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll take it. Give me the ark. Give me the ark. Give me the ark. Where did he take it? Home. 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 Lord, have mercy. I know some of you only want it in the church, but I want it in my house. Obed Edom took the ark home. And the Bible said he took the ark home and sat it in his house. I don't know where he put it. I don't know whether he put it in the, in the kitchen or in the bedroom. But the man had the right idea because he had sons. He th I think he had about eight sons. And he wanted his sons to be influenced by the presence of God. He wanted his sons to turn out to be men of character, men of substance. He wanted his sons to grow up to be a credit to the community. So he brought it home. Ah, when you leave here tonight, take it home with you take it to your bedroom take it to your kitchen so your children can be blessed your grandchildren can be blessed your great great grandchildren can be blessed when these doors are closed take it in your car take it in the street take it on the bus take it in the taxi but make sure you back it up in your living room take it on up in your bedroom put it in your kitchen so that everything in your house even the roaches will be influenced by the presence of God come on and Put your hands together. I want to hear your praising. Tell somebody I'm taking him home. I'm taking him home. I'm taking him home. I'm taking him home. I am not impressed with what you do here. The thing that impresses God is what you do at home. And some of us know what it is to wake up in the morning and a song rises up in your belly. And you get a hold of that song. At first, when you get up, you don't even know what it is yet. But by the time you hit the bathroom, it hooks up in your spirit. And that's why you can't come out the bathroom, you see. And it gets a hold to you. Jesus, you're the sweetest name I know. And you're just the same as your holy name. And that's the reason why I love you so. Lord, have mercy. It's church now. Jesus, you're the sweetest name I know. And you can't shake it. Try to get rid of it and it grabs you again. Jesus, you're the sweetest name I know. You got in the car and that's the reason why I can't drive this car because I love you so. Oh, come on and put your hands together. I want to hear you praise him. Come on, yabo, saba, yabo, shaba. Yeah, 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 yo, 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 shanda, bo, sabahaya. Come on and give him glory in this house. Hallelujah. His presence, his presence, his presence, his presence. The Bible said that Obed Edom only had it for 90 days, and all his sons were messed up for the rest of their lives. They became porters and treasurers. They became a credit to David and Solomon's administration. And the Bible said, David got jealous. Your worship life ought to provoke people to jealousy. Yes. You ought to make them mad or make them jealous. Huh? The way you love him ought to make them so jealous they want to love him like you love him. The way God's getting ready to bless you ought to make them jealous because of your relationship with God. The very thing that they said you would never receive, you got that and more. Come on and provoke somebody to jealousy. Hey, I'm also Come on and make the devil mad and make the skeptic jealous. Come on and let the onlooker feel bad because he ain't praising God. 
Because he's getting ready to bless you. I said he's getting ready to bless you. I said he's getting ready to bless you. From the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. He's getting ready to bless your house. He's getting ready to bless your doorposts. He's getting ready to bless you going in. He's getting ready to bless you when you come out. Come on and let me hear you. Let me hear you. Come on and give him glory. I want to hear you praise him who sits on the throne and unto the Lamb. Be honor and glory forever and ever. 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 Come on and praise him. That's it. Make somebody jealous because you're in love. Make somebody jealous because you got joy. Make somebody jealous because you've got peace. Make somebody jealous because your body is healed. Come on and praise him in the house. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory to God. Listen. Finally, David said, I want it back. Now, for those of you who lost that praise, uh, and for those of you who feel like you got a little dry and got a little funny, tell your neighbor, I want it back, I want it back, I want it back. I want back that praise. I want back that joy. I want back the passion. I want the excitement. I want the commitment. I want the exuberance. I want the presence. I want his glory. I want his healing. I want his blessing. Tell somebody I'm going to get it back tonight. I'm going to uh, give me some room. Give me some room. I'm going to get it tonight. There's no more something behind it. Fresh kabai. It's a bohoska bahaya. I got a little cute. I got a little dry. I got a little intellectual. But I want back my praise. The praise that took me through my sickness. The praise that took me through my valley. The praise that took me that I didn't lose my mind. Give it back to me, Holy Ghost. Turn it on in me again. Let it flow like a river. Hallelujah. Come on and praise him. Out of your belly, out of your belly. Come on and give him glory. Hallelujah. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. David wanted back the presence, the king. The ruler wanted the presence of his God. And the Bible said he went and took it. Give it to me, Obed-Edom. I want it in the presence of my people. And now they're processing. And they're walking up to Zion with the Ark of the Covenant. And now David is going to do it right. He's going to put it on the shoulders of men instead of animals. And the musicians are coming. Because you know, David had a bad choir. He perhaps didn't have it then, but later on he had a choir of 288 Levites. He had musical instruments from all over. David believed in worshiping and praise. He believed in dancing and clapping. He believed in turning around. I know some of you think that it doesn't take all of that, but when you think about who he is, and when you think about what he can do, you just can't help yourself. When you think about where he brought you from, when you think about what he's getting ready to do, Ah, God, you can't help yourself. I get joy when I think about what he's done for me. I get joy when I think about how he set me free. I get joy when I think about how he brought me out. Oh, come on and tell somebody I got to praise him. If I'm making too much noise, move, 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 move. Ah, oh, but I got to give him glory. I said I've got to give him glory. I'm not ashamed to give him glory. But there's something in it, there's something in it, there's something in it, there's something in it. When I praise him, something happens to me. Come on and praise him, church. Hallelujah. The Bible said, here comes David bringing up the presence. Here comes David bringing up the presence. Here comes David bringing up the presence. And now he's bringing up the presence of the Lord. And the psalmist, they have a call and response, a leader and a chorus. And the, and the leader says, the earth is the Lord. And the chorus said, and the fullness thereof. And the leader said, the world and they that dwell therein. And he said, for he hath founded up. And the chorus said, upon the 
seas and he established it and the chorus said upon the floods and the leader said who shall ascend into the hills of the Lord and who shall stand in his holy place and the chorus said he that hath a clean hands and a pure heart who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity nor sworn deceitfully he shall receive the blessings of the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation he that come up to God with the cards on the table he that come to God and tell God just like it is he that comes to God and ain't playing no games he that comes to God and ain't trying to be nothing that they're not it's not perfection it's honesty it's not perfection it's straightness it's not perfection it's an open heart so when you praise him tell him like it is I ain't no good but I want to be better messed up but I want to get right I did some bad things but I want to do good things come on tell somebody I'm coming straight I'm coming straight I'm not playing any games I want the blessings of the Lord I want righteousness I want salvation I'm coming with an open heart I don't have no hidden agenda I'm coming just like I am I'm not pretending I'm not playing I'm letting it all hang out come on church go up with me come on church go up with me let's go let's go let's go let's go to the hill of the Lord come on and let's go with me hallelujah come on and praise him in the house come on come on with me come on with me come on with me come on with me come on to the hill to the hill to the hill come on Zion is calling you to a higher 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 to a higher place I want to hear you praise him with a high praise there's a high praise in here there's a high praise in your mouth and a two-edged sword in your hands come on out of your belly take a deep breath and go there come on I'm on Sotaba Shambon Sikande Robobon Shandosia Ikonoriaba Rebehesko Haske Shabahon Sabande Come on, praise him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now listen. The Lord said when you come up like this, you shall receive the blessings of the Lord. Tell somebody I'm going to be blessed in here tonight. And righteousness from the God of your salvation and the Bible said the singer had to dare say this is the generation of them that seek him tell somebody I'm part of that generation ah the generation of seekers somebody better preach that for me the generation of seekers tell somebody I'm part of that I'm part of the generation of seekers I'm seeking him I'm looking for him I'm waiting for him I'm trusting in him come on generation of seekers get ready for the blessing get ready to receive from him come on and let me hear you say hallelujah Go. the Bible said and I'm almost finished because I feel a fit coming on and I know I got to bring it in I know I fail homiletics but I want you to ride with me a little bit forget about homiletics and come on up to the hill the Bible said that the leader of the chorus cry lift up your head oh ye gates and he lift him up the everlasting doors and the gates were iron gates heavy gates gates that were erected to keep the enemy out of the city they needed weights and pulleys to pull up the weights and the bible said that the chorus leader cried lift up the gates for you only keep enemies out lift up the gates because who is coming in is not your enemy lift up the gates for who is coming in is your best friend come on lift it up lift it up open the gates open the gates open the gates ah something's getting ready to happen in here open the gates there's going to be a presence in here come on there's an entrance of somebody lift it up don't you dare close the gates don't you dare keep the presence out if you want God's best lift the gates up give him entrance give him access let him come in don't block him out don't let anger don't let pride don't let fear don't let distraction
affliction. Don't let lust, don't let anybody keep the presence of God from coming in. Now at the count of three, I want you to lift up the gates. One, two, three, come on. somebody the gates are lifted tell somebody the gates are lifted and then he goes on to say and be ye lift up ye everlasting doors the gates can be lifted of the physical city but he wants to find a permanent abode inside of your heart sanctuary equals heart and be ye lifted up ye everlasting hearts it literally means he wants a permanent place in your heart. We can have a great worship service and he can visit us here and you go home with an empty heart. So he says lift up the gates and let's get it on in here. But open the doors of your heart so I could get it on in here. So after you lift up the gates, I want you now to lift up the doors of your heart. At the count of three, God wants to settle down in you. He wants to rest. He wants to rule. He wants to abide. He wants to rest. He wants to rule. He wants to abide. He wants to rest. He wants to rule. And he wants to abide. Are you ready to open, 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 open? Are you ready to move anything, anybody out of the way so he could come in? At the count of three, let me hear it. One, two. Two, three. Go. Your heart. Your heart. Your heart. Your emotions. Your will. Your intellect. Your heart. Your emotions. Your will. Your intellect. Your heart. Your emotions. Your will, your intellect, your heart, your emotions, your will, your intellect. Come on, one more time for your heart. Come on. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. That's it, my heart. Not just my lips, my heart. Not just my hands, my heart. Not just my church worship, my heart. And then who is coming in? Tell somebody who coming in, who coming in? Why are we making all this noise? Who's coming in here? Queen Elizabeth, no. President Bush, no. Who is coming in here? Who oh, glory? Oh, glory, glory, glory. Oh, my God. Hallelujah to Jesus. Lift up your, your heads over your gates and be lifted up your everlasting doors. And at the same time while you're lifting up, in conjunction with your lifting up, the king of glory shall make his entrance. Now, who is this king of glory? In every religion, you have a warrior God. The Greek gods, the, in the pantheon of the Greek gods, there is a warrior God. They have a God for love, a God for the sky, a God for the sea, and they also have a God who fights and wins. The gods of Baal or Baal, one of those Baal gods is a warrior god. 
because you're going to have battles that humanly you can't handle. So even in other religions, they realize that someone superior has to fight for them. Well, in your religion, you have a fighter God. The only difference is your God is the same God who fights, who heals, who provides. Tell somebody all in one, all in one. All. <laughs> Lord, don't you love him? Don't you love him? He's all in one, all in one. So this processional is to celebrate the attribute of his warriorship. So we are not celebrating in this song, he's a provider, he's a healer. We are celebrating him as a conquering king, which suggests he just whipped somebody. Lord have mercy. Which suggests he just fought for me and got me the victory. Which suggests I don't have to fight because he already fought for me. Come on church, there's a war going on. But we don't have to fight, all we gotta do is praise him. For he already took care of it. Whatever it is, he fought and he won. 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 Oh, we gonna celebrate in here tonight. Come on and praise him just a little bit. Hallelujah. Who is this king of glory? Who is your king of glory? Come on and ask your neighbor, who is he? Who is he? Who is he? Who is your king of glory? Why are you making all this noise? Why are you carrying on like that? Why are you making a fool of yourself like that? But if you knew what God did for me, you would carry on works. If you knew what battle he fought for me, you would act just like this. Who is the king? Who is this king? Who is this king? This king of glory is the Lord strong. Tell somebody he bad, he's bad, he's bad. He's strong. Tell somebody he's strong, he's strong. He's not puny, he's not effeminate, he's strong. He, come on and let me hear you say strong. Can't nobody whip him and can't nobody stop him. There is no God that can handle him. He's the God of gods. He is the king of kings. He is the Lord of Lord, he is the very God of the very God. He is the creator God. He is the Elohim. He is the El Shaddai. He is the master God. Now can't nobody whip him. Come on and praise him. Hallelujah. We are busy fighting when we should be praising. I want you to turn your energies from fighting, complaining, fussing, for we are fighting spirits and an army that we can't see. There are forces against you right now that you cannot see. Plots and strategies are being made right now that you don't know anything about. You're fighting people. It's not people. They are spirits. For the Bible said, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, rulers of darkness and spiritual wickedness in high places. We're so busy talking to people, fussing with people, trying to make people understand that ain't no flesh, that's a spirit. You can't do nothing with the spirit only in the name of Jesus only God can break that spirit only God can stop the advancement of the strategy ah, and God sent me here to tell you in the kingdom of champions Lord have mercy he sent me here to tell you I already took care of that tell your neighbor he took care of that the very thing that almost made you lose your mind he already tell your neighbor he already Oh, y'all don't hear me. I said, he already. Tell somebody, it's over, it's over, it's over. Tell somebody, the Lord cut it off, cut it off. The Lord put a stop to it. Before it got worse, he put the breath.
brakes on the devil. You need to praise him in here. I feel the pit coming on. I feel the praise in the boat. Ay, 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 yo, yo, yo. Ay, 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 no, 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 I'm not just saying it because it sounds good. I'm saying it because this Bible says so. This Psalms is celebrating not someone who is going into battle, but someone who went into battle and won the victory. It is a processional for a conqueror. Like when Mark Anthony rode into Rome uh, because he conquered territory for Caesar. Well, this is your God who conquered territories of hell on your behalf. So it's not somebody who is going to fight. It's somebody who fought and won, who brought home the victor's cup. So whatever the devil tells you, God didn't do for you, it's a lie. He already did it. He just wants you to praise him. He just wants you to glorify him. Come on and praise him. Hallelujah. This warrior God is in the house. Lift up the gates, open the doors, and let him come in. But when he comes in, greet him, greet him a certain way. When he comes in, worship him a certain way. Why? Because he is strong and mighty. He is mighty in battle. Lord have mercy. What's going on in your life that the Lord can't whip in here tonight? Tell me, tell me, tell me. Come on, raise your hand and tell me. What is happening in your body that God can't deliver you from? What is going on in your home that God can't stop right now, right now, right now? What is going on in your money that God can't change overnight, overnight, overnight? What is going on in your family that God can't fix, 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 fix? Hallelujah. What is going on on your job that the Lord can't ship, 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 ship? Oh, come on here. What is going on in your country that the Lord can't turn upside down? Yeah, 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 yo, 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 yo. I feel the help of the Lord. There's nothing in here that God can't handle. So at the count of three, I want to praise him. And when you praise him, see him riding. He's going to ride in the greatness of his strength. He's going to come by every chair. He's going to visit every heart. He's going to stop by every situation. And when he comes by, let yourself know. He fought and he won. Battles fought, victory won. Battles fought, victory won. Battles fought, Victory one, battles fought. 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 Victory, battles fought. 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 